What's up, guys? What's going on? Back again for another Arsenal Academy with my man Wade down there, Rory. What's Thank up, you. man? How's it going? We got a new guy here, Rick yeah. Vasquez. Now, look, guys, we say that we're experts. We like to pretend we're experts. We got an actual expert here today. We got Rick Vasquez from Active Crisis Consulting. This man is a legend. 20-plus years. He he doesn't think he's a legend, but we do. 20-plus yep. years as a Marine. I mean, the the, the, the resume is, is, is amazing, man. Tell us just a little bit about, like, what what, what you've done in your life, man. I'm just going to hit this real quick because you guys know me. Career in the Marines, did security work, worked in American Embassy, worked in Columbia, worked in Russia, left the Marine Corps, went to diplomatic security, okay. worked for them as a firearms instructor, did everything, live fire, uh, under duress. Then I left, went to ATF as a firearms enforcement officer, went up to be the acting branch chief to the firearms technology branch. Now, how long were you uh, with the ATF? I was with ATF 14 years. Okay, 14 wow. years with ATF. Okay. So, I mean, the knowledge base is there, man. And so now you've gone into active crisis consulting, actually helping people figure out their defense strategies from the biggest to the smallest, uh, keeping people safe, right? Absolutely. We take uh, the novice who's never owned a firearm to okay. corporations, and uh, we will implement a plan for them to ensure they can stay safe. Okay. All right. I mean, Rory, you were talking about it. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know. uh, we were sitting here talking about it earlier that we should send Rick over to St. Louis <laughs> to talk to that couple from yesterday, right? All right. So, <laughs> all right, come on. So let, let's talk about it. Let's get it out there. That's the big story from, from uh, in, in the news. You got the couple in St. Louis. Yep. You know, we won't get into the semantics of it, but basically they drew firearms. Uh, they felt that they were threatened. It was a crowd of protesters that broke through a barrier, trespassed on private property. And the homeowners went and got their guns and awkwardly held them and, you know, not the best trigger discipline and whatnot. But what do you think about that? Were they justified from where you I, said? I think or? they were absolutely justified. Not only did they break the barrier, they actually broke the gate into the Destroyed family's the residence. Yeah. yeah, I see the pictures so, online So they for took that it one. a step further and made threats. And, and the family didn't threaten anybody. They pulled firearms out and they held them off. Uh, in certain I see, states, I see the gray would... area, the one gray area that, I, that I'm worried about, uh, Rick, for them, because you see they're already trying to freaking go after them. And, you know, it's just it's turned into a damn political thing. Once they started to point the guns at certain people, doesn't that fall into brandishing? That's Is that a gray area? How do you feel I, I, about that? I think that? brandishing That's... is more like uh, I got my gun on my side. I'm in a Walmart yeah. and I think I look cool. <laughs> and I pull my gun. And I pull my gun out because I hear some loud kids, yeah. and I tell them to shut up with my gun in my hand. <laughs> this is more like self-defense. Yeah. The the yeah. people went onto their property. They feared for their life, and they that was in the force continuum. They brought the firearm out. They didn't engage. Didn't kill anybody. Yeah. But they used it to deter the situation and they did yeah, and i always like to say you know when anybody talks about our military or anything like that i mean it's peace through deterrence is what they did they deterred sure. the threat so nobody would come up onto their lawn or onto their property or damage their property and they deterred the threat it worked yeah if they had gone <laughs> if they had waited longer to where these people entered their home and then they pulled their gun the we got, we're talking about a whole other situation. Would have yeah. escalated and yeah. somebody would have been shot. Now, yeah. Rick, now, me and you talked offline yesterday. Now, you know, we were just talking about protecting yourself, being safe in your home, and a lot of that is having the right firearm, right? So, me and you talked about what are some of the right type firearms, right? So, we got a few here. We got, you know, we got a shotgun, we got a, you know, a pistol, we got a AK pistol here. Kind of talk about the differences. Uh, what you prefer, what you like, the pros and cons, having a short barrel shotgun, having a pistol. I'm going to expand on that. A firearm is just part of your security program. That's true. The firearm isn't your entire security program. I like everything. I like shotguns, I like rifles, I like pistols. You have to find the best for you. And one of the things we discussed yesterday was uh, how many young ladies are buying firearms today. Oh my God. Oh, lots. Yeah. And they're Stores going everywhere. into a gun store and the gun dealer is just trying to make a sell. Right. Buy this gun, buy this gun, and she gets it home. And then, as we know, these guns have all been made safe, but I'm Correct. gonna, then she gets it home and she can't pull the slide. Can't the rack the damn thing. She yeah. can't even do it. Yeah. But she got that gun sold to her and now she's got a firearm that she can't use. Yeah. The shotgun, this is the universal home defense weapon. So what Rick's got here, we got the Vepper 1204 uh, short barrel shotgun. 
and and this best one the, best is in the market. Extremely portable. Compact, yeah. I can Left fold side up fold stock. stock. Right. I mean, in reality, it's not much bigger than a handgun. Yeah. yeah. Got ten rounds on there. And yeah. and with shotgun ammunition, you can shoot from birdshot, which is low recoil, all mm -hmm. the way to slugs that'll. Yep. Break your shoulder and shoot too many. <laughs> yeah. And when you're defending your home, you're probably going to shoot somebody from 5 to 10, 15 away. You can sure. kill them with birdshot. Oh, yeah. You don't have to use double-lot buckshot. Yeah. You don't have to use slugs. So this is a firearm that people bypass so often, and they go directly to handgun. You. You know, and you got that, the AK not, pistol down there. That's not there. something we talk about too often on the show is that we can change up the ammunition quite a bit, like Rick just said. Birdshot, buckshot, slugs, whatever you want for inside right. the house. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's many shotguns that are very particular about the ammunition they eat. You must shoot high-capacity ammunition. This one shoots anything flawlessly. The last oh, yeah. thing they got down there, the, the milled AK pistol, you throw a brace on there. I mean, that puppy. I know, Rory, you got one by your damn bedside, right? So I got the Sam 7K <laughs> 44. This is the 44R with, with the, the quad nine, rail. With the yeah. quad rail, so yeah. Well, I keep a full-size rifle next to my bed, and I keep four loaded magazines, but that's me. But if you want to use a rifle caliber handgun that has a capacity to shoot through vehicles, shoot through doors, then here it is, yeah. and it cycles well. It's easier to manipulate than a handgun. It is. Because what you have is just a bolt. You cycle it, put the magazine in. You don't have a spring-loaded slide that you have to pull to the yeah. rear. No. You have a rifle caliber and, pistol. And here's the thing for you, for you ladies out there, don't be afraid of the rifles. I have a lot of female friends, a lot of female family as well that have gotten into rifles versus a pistol for home defense because they can control it better, their accuracy is better, it's not as much recoil on it as a pistol. So, you know, definitely look into uh, getting into that. You know, it's, don't be scared of the rifles, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's a common thing I see in the gun store all the time is, you know, there's females that are trying to rack the slide back and it's just really hard for them. Yeah. But, you know, uh, they, so Rick, they go right into a pistol like this, no problem. You kind of alluded to it earlier. So active crisis consulting, right? Let's just, I, I don't want to beat you up, but let's say me. I'm a homeowner. I'm a father. I'll, I come to active crisis. I say, hey, man, I want some tips. I want to I want to contract you guys. What are some, without giving away the trade secrets, what are a couple of things that you would say you recommend for like home defense, things that maybe you don't, we not, we're not thinking about, things that we could do in our daily lives, purchases I, we could make? You know, to, and I really don't care about sharing secrets. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do, and I hope you're all listening out there, I'm going to talk to you and get from you what you need. Okay. I'm going to find out what type of home, what type of experience you have. How old are your children? Uh, that's true. Are there children at home? Are they out of the house? Okay. And then we're going to, what? That all matters. How often are you going to shoot? This takes proficiency and a lot of practice, a handgun. Sure. sure. A shotgun learns, you learn how to manipulate it. You learn okay. how to manipulate it, and you point it at somebody in that direction. Even if you miss, shoot a shotgun at me and see how fast <laughs> I'm going to run. You know, so yeah. there's a lot of differences. Yeah. So I just had a class, I think I told you just last week, and I sat down with a husband and wife team. Okay. And went through that whole thing that we're doing. And I spent six hours the first day, and we probably wow. only shot 30 rounds. Wow. Because oh, wow. it was all about manipulation of the firearm. Sure. It's all about what, where are you going to put your firearm. A lot of people buy a weapon and put it in a safe, and then they can't get to their safe. So That's all true. of these things are That's a security true. plan. That's true. And the firearm is just a portion of the security plan. So when you're selling training, Talk to the shooter. Don't talk about the firearm. Okay. The firearm that you will find to fit that person will come. He's got a good experience. He's got a good upper body strength. I would always tell him, <laughs> don't just <laughs> also don't just buy one gun. <laughs> you know, buy a pistol and a shotgun. Right. Buy a pistol and a rifle. Preferably an arsenal rifle. Preferably an yeah. arsenal and a Rex shotgun. Zero one pistol. And a Rex zero one pistol. <laughs> A Vepper shotgun. <laughs> no, but hey, man, we we so appreciate you being here, man. I know this is a quick hit. You super busy guy. Look, guys, activecrisisconsulting.com. Uh, the man's knowledge is more than I'll, I'll learn in a lifetime. Uh, definitely hit his company up. They're doing great work out there in the defense industry, keeping you guys safe, keeping us safe, you know, with knowledge. So uh, 
I think that's about it, Roy. I know you yeah. got the social. Got a yeah, yeah. We can always uh, catch us here on YouTube. You know, Instagram. We're very popular as well, and uh, also on Facebook. But also, you know, we may have Rick back for another segment again definitely. in the future. Oh, definitely. So why not throw us some questions at arsenalinc.com? Yeah, and uh, maybe get you some answers next time yeah. around. So questions at arsenalinc.com. Yeah, hit us up. You got questions for Rick? Questions for us? Definitely hit us up. Um, hey, remember, Black Guns Matter. I said it. I believe it. We love you guys. We'll see you on the next Arsenal Academy.